Not too long ago, Microsoft announced Windows 10 S alongside their Surface laptop, which was a beautiful device, by the way. But there was a lot of confusion. What is Windows 10 S and what does the S stand for? Microsoft threw words around like speed, security, streamlined, but never actually gave us an exact meaning for the letter S. But regardless, uh, the big difference between 10 S and Windows 10, uh, Microsoft was basically just touting that it is faster, it boots up a lot faster, it performs a lot faster, it has a lot more battery life, and it's more secure. The other thing is that it only runs Windows Store apps. And now while that might sound super bad, hear me out. Now these store-only apps are vetted and optimized, uh, and then also can affect your startup. So in other words, they can't just run when the computer boots up, and they're actually sandboxed as well, much like, let's say, Mac OS. Now this compared to regular EXE programs, which basically can do whatever the heck they want to your PC. Uh, they can change things in the registry, they actually sometimes leave things behind when they're uninstalled, etc., etc. And this is partially the reason why there's a lot more virus protection needed for PCs than, say, for Mac. Now, because they also can't affect the system's registry, they only affect a virtual one, um, they can't actually affect other programs on the computer or the computer OS uh, itself. They also, when they are uninstalled, are completely uninstalled without a trace. And since Windows can handle all of these apps a lot easier, uh, it'll keep your computer running faster for longer compared to ones that you have all of these different programs and games coming in and out and making changes, etc., etc. And all of that is really one of the reasons why people dislike Windows. Over time, things start to slow down, glitches, all of this other stuff. Um, but us as techies know to try to avoid these types of things. We're very careful about what we install. Uh, we even do resets once in a while to clean Windows off, which, by the way, Microsoft actually put a feature into Windows 10 and a button for you to be able to do this, further vindicating the fact that they kind of understand that this happens to Windows as well from all of the programs that you're installing and uninstalling, etc. Beyond that, if this actually caught on, it would allow Microsoft to rein in this wild west of poorly coded programs, uh, prevent viruses, etc. It might even let them streamline the OS once all of the apps are using this new UWP program format, in other words, the Windows Store apps, uh, because they could be able to change pieces of the legacy code and get rid of some of it, etc., and have all the apps kind of just adapt as needed. And thanks to their desktop bridge program, uh, you can actually take your current desktop app, package it with this new software to make it a UWP or a universal Windows program, and then it'll work in the App Store. It'll be that sandbox thing, and again, allow it to adjust to the OS if they decided to go down that path. Uh, on top of that, it would also, a lot of them, depending on the code, could then run, also run on Xbox, Windows Phone, and any other Windows type PCs, etc. Right now, if Microsoft just tried to make these changes to the OS without having everybody's program be in this type of a package, uh, it would probably kill a lot. In fact, it would kill a lot of the EXE programs and all these legacy programs that are out there that is a huge portion of Windows's uh, user base. Essentially, it's also the reason why a lot of people are still on versions of Windows that could be even a decade or older. Now, another benefit of all this is that there are lower hardware requirements because everything is a little bit more streamlined. So you can get laptops like this Acer Aspire 1 with this cool hinge that lets you share the screen. It's super lightweight. It has a ton of ports, including an SD card slot. It has a battery that lasts all day. It's got four gigs of RAM, a quad-core Celeron processor, 1080p screen, all for just 200 bucks. And I even like this top cover. It's got like this cool fabric looking pattern on it, as well as a similar pattern around the keyboard. So it's not the worst looker either. And because it does run Windows 10 S, it's pretty darn smooth, even given the modest specs. Now, all of this sounds great, right? There's just, there's just one not small hurdle. Huge brands that have popular apps, so for example, Google and Chrome browser, would need to repackage their programs in order for them to work and be submitted to the Windows Store and then be able to be installed on these devices. Uh, and right now, since there's not a lot of 10S devices out there, there's not really a big incentive for these companies to take the time to do that. Uh, on top of that, all of the other legacy apps that we talked about that a ton of other people still use on Windows. None of those work on 10s right now. Now you can always pay $50 to upgrade from Windows 10s to Windows 10 Pro. So if you need any of those desktop apps, you do that 
and now you're back on normal Windows. Now, I think the idea here for Microsoft, though, is that they're going to try to promote this to students, uh, workplaces, things where people don't necessarily need a lot of those desktop apps, and the things that they do need, they can get into the store a little bit quicker because it's a bit more of a niche. Then they'll have a decent user base of those people, and people who need to opt out can, which is great, unlike old school Windows RT, if we remember that. Um, but this will still give them some form of a user base to where they can then maybe try to entice developers to at least bring it to that and so on and so forth and maybe it can grow. So it would seem that Windows 10S is a bit of a catch-22. On the one hand, if developers all jumped on board, it could bring a new era for Windows, which would be great. But on the other hand, um, it needs to have enough of an adoption without mainstay apps for developers of those mainstay apps to want to participate in it. Now, while it might seem like a slim chance, I personally think Windows 10S is a brilliant idea. And it's very difficult, you have to imagine, for Microsoft, which has this huge legacy database of people, to be able to switch them over to something new. And it takes something like this, I think, and a, a lot of hope that people will adopt it to be able to finally get to the next step where they can actually evolve Windows into something even better. Now, I also hope that developers just kind of, you know, take one for the team try to add their app to the Microsoft Store, just so that maybe together we can all evolve Windows.